Welcome to ChristianLivingRadio.com. This is Roberta Goins bringing you a message today on P31 Women's. So before we get started, I'd like to open with a quick prayer. So Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your continual blessings that you shower upon us. And especially today, on this day, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, that we remember your son Jesus that you sent to die for us on the cross. So thank you, Lord. There's nothing we can do to thank you enough for salvation. And Lord, please bless this word that we're about to share. May it bless someone's life, including my own. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, everybody, so let's get started. As I already said, today is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. So happy Easter. Um, for those of you who aren't a believer, of course, today is the day that Christians represent the rising Jesus after he was crucified and laid for three days in a grave. He rose to life at sunrise, and this is where our entire belief system, our beliefs are based around. So, please, if you are listening to this and you don't understand who Jesus is, please, I encourage you to grab a Christian that you know, ask about him, and listen to our other shows, we will address it. But for today's lesson, I need to get on and talk about a very special woman in this Bible. A woman near and dear to my heart, probably my favorite character in the Bible, as odd as it may sound. Um, there's many different characters in the Bible, and if you're like me, kind of a nerdly person when I read it, my mind goes a little deeper and I start thinking about um, these people and how they were living 2,000 years ago. These aren't just characters on a page. These were actual people that lived. So I'm always intrigued to think about them and their lives and you know, just their day to day. I think it's very interesting. So I want to share with you today on P31 Women about my favorite character in the Bible. It's a woman. and. I greatly admire Noah's wife. And I know what you're thinking, those Bible scholars out there, you're thinking, what? There's so many other people to admire and do studies on. But let me tell you why Noah's wife is actually a pretty awesome woman in my mind, like probably the original P31. So, of course, we read about Noah and the story of the flood in Genesis. And um, without Noah and his family, basically all of civilization, all of humankind would be gone. Because, of course, God came to Noah and told him to build this huge ark. And for a hundred years, he labored on this big, huge boat. So then when God sent the flood to wipe out all of the world, there would be humans and all the animals that would survive. So Noah, of course, a great man of God, he heard what God said and obeyed to a T, which I'm sure was extremely difficult to do. But the person that I admire when I read this story is Noah's wife. And here's why. So I can't imagine what Noah's neighbors and friends and people around him were saying about him at the time. Because, of course, we're talking a huge ark. Not just like a little thing he's building in his front yard. We're talking something completely a gargantuan ship. And God gave him the exact tools to use, the exact measurements to make, um, the lumber, everything. So Noah spent a hundred years working on this. So we're talking he spent his own money. He spent you know all of his time, his spare time, building this big thing. So I can imagine what it was like in their world with everybody watching him do this, I think they probably thought he lost his mind, okay? Neighbors, friends, they are ridiculing him. They're saying, what are you doing? You're spending your fortune, your hard-earned money on this thing? What are you building? An ark for rain? What's that? Rain? What? I mean, everybody, I can just imagine all the ridicule. But Noah stayed faithful, okay? He stayed faithful to God and what God told him to do. Now, Noah's wife, funny enough, is never named in the Bible. Obviously, we know that she existed because she's actually mentioned 
one, two, three, four, five times. She's mentioned five times in this story in Genesis. But every time she's mentioned, it's in an indirect way. Like when God was giving Noah a, a command to do. Noah, take your wife and your sons and your sons' wives, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Or she's also mentioned in like a third person way when it's like just telling the story. Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives, blah, blah, blah. So the wife, we don't even know her name. She remains nameless, but that's okay. Because to me, without her, I don't think the ark would have been built. And here's why. A wife is the closest person to her husband besides God, right? We think about right order. God first, spouse second. So the wife is the one that's in the husband's ear constantly, every night. So I know that Noah's wife was subject to ridicule and teasing as well. Of course, she had to be. I know that they were talking about this family behind their back. I know that she was approached by people saying, what is your husband doing? He's lost his mind. This is crazy. So she could easily have chosen to believe them, to listen to all the naysayers get in her mind and say, you know, you're right. Our husband's wasting all our money. He's wasting all his time. He's become a raving lunatic. She could have left him. She could have just packed up and left. A hundred years of this nonsense, come on. She could have been in his ear every night as a naysayer, like, what are you doing? You've got to stop this. I'm so embarrassed. But it never addresses any of that in the Bible. So I believe, kind of taking the clues from the circumstances around it, I believe that Noah's wife was actually a great cheerleader. I think that she was a source of support for him, saying, you know what, I... I didn't get this word from God or, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what this is about, but I trust you. As my husband, I trust you. And I'm going to submit to your authority that you got the word of God, that you got a message from God to do this. So I'm going to stand by your side and let you do your thing, and I will be your cheerleader and your support surrounding you so you are able to accomplish this great feat. So... That's why, to me, Noah's wife, I mean, I think she should really be celebrated. Because really, what if she had been that nagging wife? And Noah's just like, you know what, you're right. He starts to doubt himself. Because, you know, as we all know, a wife can really steer her husband in a direction. And sometimes that direction could be off course of where God wants him to go. So we as wives need to be careful that we don't let Satan or sin get in our ear become that little bug you know and it can come in the form of a friend or a neighbor that comes you comes to you sits down for coffee and says you know what I really think your husband's lost it he needs to go to the loony house he is crazy so she to me was very faithful that she cut that off and said nope I'm not gonna listen I'm gonna be faithful and I'm gonna support and so, obviously, as a result, Noah built the ark, got all the animals in there and his family, the floods came, wiped out the whole world, and then they were left. And they repopulated, and that's the reason we're all here today. So I applaud Noah's wife. And as a closing, I just want to point out a direct contrast to Noah's wife, who is mentioned in the Bible, funny enough, never by name, just like Noah's wife. So I want to talk very quickly about another wife, Job's wife, that we, re we read about um, in Job. And like I said, once again, she was never named as well. The Bible doesn't give her a name. She's just called Job's wife. So for those of you who don't know the story of Job, very quickly, um, everything was taken away from him. He lost his fortune, his kids, every, his businesses, everything kind of in one day. And he had a choice whether to just kind of lay down and die or get mad and blame God or stay faithful to God and say, you know, I don't know what your plan is, God, but I'm going to stay faithful. I love you. And I'm just going to see this through to the end. And he praised God throughout the whole thing. Well, Job's wife, as we read in Job 2, 9, I'll find it here. Like I said, she was never mentioned by name. It's just Job's wife. 
this verse, Job 2.9 says, His wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. That's in quotes. So Job's wife, in the midst of all of his suffering and sorrow, that's what she told him. That was the route she decided to go. Because it wasn't only his life, obviously, that was crumbling. It was hers as a direct result. So she chose to go the direct opposite path from Noah's wife and get in Job's ear and say, you know what, enough of this. Just, you should just kill yourself. This is miserable. God is horrible. Just curse him and just be rid of it. So just wanted to point out Job's wife in contrast. So anyway, as a closing, I just wanted to say, every day we're kind of faced with these situations. You know, maybe our husbands get a word from God, or maybe they make a decision that we don't fully agree with. And we obviously do have the authority to, to question them, go to them. But if we know that they are directly working under God's authority and from God's word, we need to be the support and the cheerleaders. We need to be the ones that tell them every day, you're doing a great job, keep going because it doesn't help anybody in any situation to become that nagging wife or that Job wife that just gives up on him. Just, you know, when the going gets tough, they're gone. Or, you know, they, they give him a word like, you just shouldn't even be alive. So, every day we're faced with this challenge to choose to be a P31 wife. So the next time you're faced with something and you got those people in your ear talking, what are you going to do? Choose to be cheerleader. Choose to be supportive. And choose to be faithful. And always remember right order. It's God first and spouse second. So that's the word for today from P31 Women. And once again, happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. God bless everybody. This is ChristianLivingRadio.com.